Welcome, everyone, to the first recording of uh, hopefully a long-running podcast uh, with myself and Arvin, where we share Web3 marketing strategies, tips, talk about what's going on in the news, and hopefully share uh, and uh, provide feedback on some mistakes you can avoid so that you can have a successful project. Uh, my name is Jeffrey, I'm one of the co-founders here at CrowdCrate, and Arvin would love to hear from you, introduction, and just uh, kind of goals and, and Let's get started. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. My name is my name is Arvin Kamsay with Sold Out NFTs. Um, yeah, I'm pumped to do this with you. And just going, there's been obviously a lot of collections sold out, a lot of collections that haven't sold out in this industry, um, probably more so that they haven't sold out. And so, um, so it's cool to see, you know, why some of them are not as successful. Um, especially when, you know, Web2 companies, they're coming in thinking, um, you know, they've built everything inside their their own industry or their own, um, you know, in the Web2. And then they come in and it's not the same, you know, this like plane level. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about. So nice. So Arvin, I actually knew of you because I was scrolling on Twitter and I saw one of your ads for a sold out NFT project. I was like, wow, this is a really oh, good yeah. uh, ad. I was like, oh, I wonder who does it. And then just, you know, uh, kind of learning about each other in the industry. So uh, very impressive. You know, we, we, you're an expert here with CrowdCrate. We send projects over your way and, and just uh, have nothing but respect for what you're doing. And so maybe just share like, <laughs> yeah, like, I also I also uh -huh. want to say like how so the the way the way I uh, I met you and um, I guess everyone else in your company. So I um I heard the I heard like people. So I have my incubator, of course, and I heard people like talking about like for influencers, they come mm -hmm. they come to you guys, you yeah. know. Um, and so so that's that's how that's how I I learned about you guys, and then uh, like a bunch of people mentioned, and I finally was just like, okay, cool, like I'm gonna check it out, and then. Uh, yeah, so we got talking and then since then we've just, you know, done a few things here and there. And so that's, that's great. Like I just pumped to do this with you. That's awesome. But yeah, yeah. So let's go back and forth. Like, so what are your like top strategies that you kind of advise um, projects on and just kind of at a high level that we can get deeper and deeper? Yeah. So, I mean, I was just, so obviously like the, the latest thing, I mean, of course, depends on when people are going to see this, but the latest things happening in this industry, it was, it was Porsche NFT. Right. So um, they came in to take the industry by storm, but they didn't really. So uh, they, you know, there's just obviously the head headlines of the news. It's more like, you know, let the let the, um, I guess, NFT or Web3 natives take the wheel. Right. Instead of you doing it yourself, um, because, you know, they I think there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of things that they've done where people maybe didn't make a ton of sense to, to be, oh yeah, there you go. So maybe it didn't make a ton of sense. So I guess like, for example, so they did 7,500 um, NFTs, which is fine, right? They still, like, I I like it if if a project is not, is not like a, that well known. Um, I like it to, for them to have like a really good strategy to go like to first drop, they do 7,500 because it's not the bull market, right? Um, and then, of course, people know the 9-11. So then they were like, well, let's just have the price as um, 0 0.911. But then a lot there's been a lot of backlash. So a lot of people have been talking about, okay, this is too much. Uh, especially, so this is, I think this is where, this is where maybe they, they didn't think this through. So they came in. Um, they said, okay, they want to have a like a price that's I guess larger than the average, but the average inside the uh, Ethereum industry, I guess Ethereum blockchain not industry, but is um is zero point zero seven. So their price point is so high compared to the average, um, and they just simply, I assume, and I may be presumptuous, but I assume. They simply, because of their reputation outside the industry, they they had it to be, you know, that large of a price, which is not like it's not crazy, right? So it's not like ten million dollars, but like it's it's a it's just the price that people, most people, they're just not willing to just invest. But then it's also interesting because 
so they sold out, I believe, 31%. Last time I looked at it, it was like 16%, but I think before they stopped their mint, at 30, 31% to 33%, um, they s- sold out of their 7,000-ish NFTs. But but the thing is, um, so, and everyone, everyone's just like a lot of backlash. Everyone's talking about how terrible this, this NFT launch was and all that stuff. But then, I don't know what it is right now. Maybe we should go on OpenSea and check. But okay. the floor price, last time I checked, was actually uh, 2.7 ETH, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so, so it's not actually that bad. You nice. know what I mean? Like there's yeah. just a lot of people, a lot of people just, um, you know, just they've been very, um, I guess they were very negative around just you know how terrible their launch was and they couldn't they didn't it wasn't smooth or all that stuff but then it, yeah like what what do you think yeah <laughs> so here it is on um on open c um yeah so 2 eth floor price there you go so people made money right right so yeah i mean um, it's not all just about making money but still right i agree i agree and I guess the whole purpose for me, like kind of first principles thinkers on it is the whole purpose of NFTs or digital collectibles, as it should have been called for Porsche, should have been really to engage and reward the current audience and the brand that's Porsche. And so I'm, I'm wondering, like, if you own a Porsche, it should be a no brainer to want to collect one of these NFTs. And, and one, I don't think that they really promoted it to their existing Porsche owner web two fan base yeah so like actually so that's that's one thing right so who actually bought it um and then when it comes to the utilities so they had um one of the utilities was like you can go to uh porsche's events but i'm pretty sure if you're an owner of a porsche like there's there are a lot of clubs i'm pretty sure also even the dealership would invite you to their events Mm -hmm. when there are events um i so I I uh, I drive a vet, um, and then I I get all those emails, right? So they're like, oh hey, there's this event, there's this other thing happening, there's this like car show, all sorts of things, right? I'm pretty sure they have it too. So I don't know how they thought people have to pay, um, and then they could come into these events. But then I guess I guess they're thinking maybe people who don't have who don't own the car, right? Who don't own the um, the brand then they could also come into the event by having the nft but then but that takes away from the people who do have the car because then that's why they're they're there right they're coming to that event because they want to meet with other people who have the same car and they have the same passion right and like there are these car clubs i'm part of where you know you just you just go there and just ride with them because you just, it's just a thing. Like, you just, I don't know. It's like your, your football team, your soccer team, right? It's like you just support it and then you, you want to meet people who support it too. You have something in common. But then you see all these people who have the NFTs, but they don't have the car and they're yep. going to come to your event. So then I don't know how that, that made sense to them. It, to me, it doesn't. And yep. what do you think? Yeah, I 100% agree. And so one is that, right, they didn't even tap into their existing user base to reward them. The Porsche, mm. I've been to there. I've been to a Porsche North America's um, autocross track events. I think I was on the Porsche website. I didn't, I not, and I don't even drive a is Porsche. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. <laughs> and so actually, this is really interesting. So I'm a car guy. Um, I have a Ferrari and I nice. went to this Porsche um, track events. You know, what's really interesting right now is that mm, Porsches are holding its value much better than McLaren, than Lamborghini. And of these other brands is because of this brand um, ethos that that Porsche has built, that the collectors wow. actually want to buy Porsches as opposed to those other cars. And, you know, the stigma against like some of the other uh, car manufacturers is that you buy it and then it actually drops 50% in value. <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a fast depreciation curve. And so Porsche yeah. has done such a great job curating this um, this group of people. And so I'm just absolutely... Um, I, I am I am surprised that it did not have a successful launch, and I think that they also did not put enough effort in to marketing towards. So this is the Porsche Club of of America that 
<laughs> I've done some events with, and it's such a strong community. Exactly like you said, if they if they uh, used it as more of a, a digital collectible and also membership to be a part of autocross, to be a part right. of these events and these people. So, get, yeah. Yeah. So what's the what's the age group that's buying Porsche? Like what's the what's the like typical profile? It's like I, I tell you something that's funny because like uh-huh. I so I went to my Corvette club and yeah. it's just I mean it's just like it's just the older white male, right? Yeah. So that's that's what it is. <laughs> and so which which is funny because I actually talked to some bunch of people in there. Um and I was just like, you know, so do you guys, and these guys, these guys, some of them have like multiple, um, multiple just Corvettes just because they love it so much. Right. Yeah. But, um, but they, they, uh, I talked to them. I was like, Hey, this is like, what do you think about NFTs? Cause I wanted to get a, get a sense. Like, you know, I, there's, there's going to be a point where you can talk about NFTs with everyone. Right. But it's not yeah. there yet. I don't think it's there yet. And so, um, so anyways, I just talked to these guys and then they were all just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, so so I'm wondering, what is it when if if like Porsche would just email their email list and be like, hey, we're just doing an NFT launch. Like what would people what, what's the first reaction like the, the owners would have? Right. Would they just be like, ah, not sure. Yeah. Or would they be like, this is so cool. Like finally, like, you know. I thought that they should call it because the, so uh, you asked them what is the general like demographic of the Porsche owner. So this is the Porsche yeah. Club of America, Los Angeles. It is all walks of life. It, you know, it's typically male, but there's quite a bit of uh, females, right. all um, ethnicities, and it's it's really right. incredible. They get together on a regular basis, and if they would have said, "Hey, we're launching these membership passes." So you right. can attend our next event. They would have sold out immediately saying, hey, this is a digital pass that gets you access to our next autocross event. This gets you access to this. This is the racetrack here in Los Angeles. And they would nice. say, hey, if you purchase this digital collectible, you can attend our next um, meet and greet where you can see our next Porsche model first before everybody else. And I wish right. that they would have taken it with this approach well, rather than calling it an NFT. Yeah, I think one of their one of their utility is that you get to vote on. I don't know if it's like the next car mm-hmm. that comes out, or well, this is just some of the features of it. You get to actually vote on it. But like, I think who else did it? Etihad Airlines did it as well. They're like, oh, so you get to vote on like the next like improvements we're gonna make. But like. I don't think that's that's very so the idea is really cool but maybe it's this is me I mean, you tell me like what you think but I've never seen big companies be like hey uh, here's a suggestion box you guys tell us what are some things to do and then actually like implement it um so to me that just seems like a mute point but what do, what do you think yeah so um a brand that we worked with that I think approached this properly from the start, and, and they're a newer company, is called Mobilize, which is owned by Renault. And so they started first with the actual NFT. So, so if you were to buy a, a car, say a Toyota Camry, uh, a Prius, which is like the best selling cars uh, out here, and then you buy it and then you customize it on the website, and that turns into an NFT. So it's really cool. So you can have this car customization, and now it's a digital collectible. Uh, you know, the future would be you can take this and you can start putting it into different games. You can hang it up on your wall. You can have it in your mobile phone and that'll get you, you know, just have more uh, uh, affinity into it. So I think those brands are actually doing it right. And just with with Porsche, I'm really surprised that of these local Porsche like groups that I see, people were not talking about it in the Facebook group. Uh, Porsche's Web3, no, they did not. So like Porsche's Web3 NFT movement was so far removed from actually people that love their Porsche. And, mm. and I don't even think they were aware that the NFT even launched is, is what I was well, Are they about. aware now? But at no. some point, okay, You're so right. here's the thing. So at some point when everyone started talking, just saying, oh, well, this didn't work out. This was a terrible move, blah, blah, blah. At that point, the fans would have known maybe right because like i saw it like in like all these like different publications although they were all web three publications i didn't see any web two publications maybe that's why but 
Uh, so at some point, maybe they would have known and then they'd be like, okay, we didn't know about this, but now we see it. It's at 16% sales. And then they come in and just like rush to buy the rest of it. Right. right. But that didn't happen either. So I think there's definitely some people that didn't know, but maybe after all these conversations happen around them not selling out before they stopped the mint, there was a period of time where people, maybe some people from the fans got to know it, but they still didn't care. Right. Um, so, so there's that. But the other thing I thought about, maybe these guys were not just comfortable with actually telling people saying, we're going to do this. You know, they, they didn't even call it like a web three. I think they're, they even, uh, like URL is like NFT, right? And then mm. NFT is like, you know, you said you talked about the ads I do, right? So um, there are a lot of people like immediately say NFT scam, like NFT is a scam. Like, wow. so there is, so I think there maybe they're just like kind of tiptoeing, like just they're not really sure that they want to do this. They're like, well, let's just launch it. Hopefully not many people see it. And then we still sell out. Like, I think yeah. that's what, that's kind of like, <laughs> I agree. Kind of the idea, you know? Uh, yeah. So this is the actual Porsche's Twitter page. Isn't it? It's surprising yeah. that they did not promote it they didn't or get people it. like, <laughs> right. They, they did not uh, Oh, actually here it is. Uh, November 21st. Follow our new okay. Twitter channel, ETH underscore Porsche for updates. Okay. Yeah. So oh, one yeah. tweet, November 21, and then. I guess that was that was pretty much it. it looks like they put maybe they're deleting effort. it. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's actually take a look at it here. Yeah. So um, oh, not bad. You know, forty-seven thousand followers, and it yeah. looks like they were um, now they're pretty active on this. You know, some of the strategies that we recommend. I saw that they had Phase Clan um, as an influencer. And so uh -huh. us, you know, we highly recommend influencers here and, and the influencers right. in the sense that, um, you know, they can help educate about the launch, they can AMA. Help promote it. Yeah. Okay. They have an AMA here. And so yeah. how many people, uh, can you scroll up a little bit? How many people was it? 170. Wow. See, that's so audience. Low. It is, that's it is so for low. such a, for such a well-known brand. brand. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And that's just like that's that what annoys the, the fans. They're like, you guys like not doing it well. And they get right. the point of that. Right, I wonder right. how many Web3 people just like unfollowed this page. Um <laughs> they, they loved they loved they loved Porsche, but they're like no longer like liking it. <laughs> right. It's kind of funny. Mint closed. And also, like, why did they close the mint? I mean, it's kind of interesting. They closed the mint. And then the, so it became even more scarce, right? Mm -hmm. So they, that was the whole thing. They're like, oh, it's only 7,000 of them. And then I think maybe 2,000 bought and they're like, okay, we're just going to close them in. Uh, so, which means it's even going to be more scarce. Yeah. Uh, I don't quite understand, to be honest, uh, the concept, see like for Bitcoin, the scarcity makes sense, right? There's only like 20 something millions of it, right? But for NFTs, it doesn't, I, I actually, so I'm in this industry. I still, to me, like, okay, so non-fungible token means they cannot be duplicated, right? So that makes sense. The, right. the concept, the technology makes sense. But the fact that they they promote it as like, this is a scarce um, and that's why you should buy it. It doesn't make sense in this context. What do you think? Yeah. Um, you know, I think moreover is that the details of these NFT mints for me, if I just like Porsche and if they just gave me something cool, I, I don't really get into the specifics. You know, I'm, I'm not the type of NFT collector that really look, digs into the tokenomics. Uh, it's usually, right. No due diligence. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I just very on, on a service level so much as like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think that NFT is such a revolutionary technology that people, they need to make it much simpler. Like OpenSea was very simple to, to sign yeah. up. I think well, Starbucks's Web three was very simple to sign up and um, on Polygon, yeah. right? I think that's what it, that's. So here's so I, I guess that's the like next maybe next point is like, okay, choice of choice of blockchain. So mm -hmm. they went to the most OG blockchain for uh, for NFTs, and then they just picked none of the influencers or advisors from ETH to right. just 
to go with them along the way. That's like, that's just like borderline disrespectful, right? For like, for people actually in this industry, right? They're like, you come into the most OG one. Like if you were to go into some, like maybe, you know, okay, so maybe, I don't know, let's say Hedera, um, XRP, uh, or, you know, some other chains where it's like new, not many people, uh, not many influencers in it yet. There are a lot of money. There's a lot of transactions, but maybe not in, uh, many influencers. It's okay, right? So maybe you didn't get hold of them. Maybe the influencers are just so small. It doesn't make sense. Or maybe you got hold of them, but the influencers are so small, no one sees them. But then if you go to Ethereum and then you get like no one, like mm-hmm. to, to like, none of these advisors, none of these influencers to come with you along this journey, that's just like complete, like to me, that's just like, it's just like, basically just saying like we don't care right like you just yeah like you guys you, you know it's just i don't know to me that's that that's that must have sucked for the like these people in this in this industry where they like they were waiting they're like so right. when are we going to get reached out from these people right we've done all this work we built so much in this industry and these guys have zero like respect and then they have the audacity to just say they're coming to this industry which we owned Right? Exactly. Like have built in it. Ag- um, agreed. Hundred percent agreed. You know the whole the ethos exactly like you said, like ETH Denver and these ETH developers are really pushing the boundaries of technology, Web three, NFT, right? These new use cases. And why did not? Uh, why did it Porsche reach out to these devs to say, hey, let's do something amazing? And that would have really gotten the ETH community excited about it. I do want to share some projects and like some strategies that actually people can uh, use as inspiration. So right now, I think just wrapped up the Australian Open. And this is a fantastic project. I don't know if you saw this, but it's the Australian Open Art Ball. And they actually did this last year. And so what they did was they took the entire tennis court, I don't know if you've seen this, and then they turned um, the court into little squares where you can collect um, squares on the court. And so if the ball lands in your square, and so just take a look at the, the website itself. It's just absolutely incredible, right? When it lands in the square, it would be like having you on the court and you getting excited about it and um, welcoming new members. The way the execution behind this is absolutely incredible. It's actually coming from um, a, one of the Decentraland team members that uh, did partnerships. His, his company is called NFT Tech. And his name is uh, Adam and he's absolutely incredible. And so you could, I feel that this is one of the um, projects that actually are doing NFT, right? Just providing so much value. They tied in these ground passes to the NFTs and they were actually doing this uh, last year as well. And, um, you know, yeah, uh, Forbes picked it up saying that it was a game changer. And, you know, while they do not have the audience that Porsche did, I think it's a great example of people pushing the boundaries. And Did also, they sell out or no? Um, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it, they 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 did it even this year, even though the market has kind of um, mm. been, uh, you know, yeah. Cold. So like you talked about, you talked about the the how easy it is for people, right? So Reddit, mm-hmm. for example, they call it collectibles. So they they were like, we're not going to even deal with that NFT stigma. Uh, and then, and also, I believe, uh, were they on Polygon? If I'm not mistaken, I think they were on Polygon as well. Were they? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then for the same reason, I think Doodles they're going to flow. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so they're they're actually migrating from Ethereum, um, so out of Ethereum to flow where the top shots were. Um, and the reason they they said one of the reasons they said they they're doing that is because. It's just simplicity of just masses coming into it, right? So mm. at the very beginning, so like they actually like the concept of people just signing up, um, just like how they buy like e-commerce, they just coming in and just buy it, right? Versus versus like, okay, so not that, you know, not that actually it's difficult on Ethereum, like you just have a meta mask and you just connect your wallet, boom, you, you buy it. Actually, if if anything... I think the argument is maybe like some of the other chains are actually difficult, more difficult, which like, for example, XRP, I really like the chain, but like, I would say for people to learn the Zom wallet, maybe that's actually a little bit more difficult. There's a little bit more steps uh, uh, involved, but but the, the simplicity is what you're saying. That's also a really big deal. And I'm surprised 
they did they even have like a credit card option or no? Like for people to just be able to buy buy the NFTs with credit card or no? Um, depending on the project, but yeah, I mean the major ones, right? Like NBA top. Oh, no, Porsche. Shot. Oh, the, Porsche. The Porsche. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not too sure about. That. I don't think they yeah. did. I mm-hmm. think they only just had the, the only can just connect your, um, connect your MetaMask. Yeah. Uh, just like ETH wallet. Right. Yeah. So like, these are all these points that we were just, uh, you know, I think we were just talking about it last time. Had they just spoken with people inside this industry, I think it would have just been very apparent right. inside, you know, how, yeah. how they launched, um, and how, how different the launch would have turned out. But, um, but yeah, so like these are the like different chains, like uh, you know, and then they went with it. So here's the other thing that I was just actually thinking a lot when they launched. So Tezos, I don't know how familiar you are with uh the, the chain Tezos. Mm-hmm. So uh Audi, uh McLaren, uh, and then F1 for the like Red Bull, uh, they had their F1. All of these guys, and I think it, there's probably like one or two more um, actually car companies. They went on Tezos. And then, so now, I don't know, maybe the argument is Tezos paid them to go there, right? So that's possible too. But McLaren did sell out. Uh, hmm. I don't know if it was, if it was, and they did actually five, uh, five waves, they call it, five waves of sold out. And um, so, so, so then it would just make sense to me, like if I was just doing out, uh, like uh, doing Porsche, be like, okay, um, I'm gonna go on the same chain, right? All these guys, they did really well. Like I don't know if, why they didn't they con- consider it, right? So instead they just went to a chain where there's a massive decrease in the the actual value. Like so, the the biggest collection, the blue chip collections, they've just gone down by seventy percent, eighty percent. Versus all these new chains, there's a bit of increase in in uh, transactions because it's new, right? There's a lot of a lot more money coming into it. It's more excitement. The market sentiment is more uh, is more positive. But then no, they just picked the picked the uh, literally picked the oldest one, uh, picked the worst one as far as the market sentiment. They didn't even get any help from the from that same chain that they could have just crushed it maybe with them if they had all these people involved like you know the advisors the consultants the the influencers um and then they picked the price so high that even the web three people inside the ethereum wouldn't want it um and then they didn't tell their people their own fans to come and buy it it's like they just really just like there's not a shred of evidence that these guys wanted to like desperately sell out they just were like let's just just launch it and see what happens. This is what it seems like to me. Like, I don't know what you think. Yeah. So walk us through your, when choosing a blockchain to mm-hmm. launch with, like walk us through, right? There, there's there's quite a bit of options. Honestly, right? uh-huh. yeah. So so that's that's actually been a recent, recent, I want to say area of, area of attention for me. Mm-hmm. So in the past, like in the bull market, no one cared. Like majority of projects we were on ETH. I didn't even bother to just like look and be like, okay, well, why are you on ETH, right? If you were on ETH, you would sell out. If you were on Solana, you would sell out. It didn't matter. But then um, obviously the bear market happened. And then now those little things matter, right? So like, it's just like, um, I don't know, let's say like for your for your car, right? So like you have a maybe uh, some upgrade or some like those little things that just like one or two percent increase in like speed or like the acceleration those things matter when like nothing is working right which is right in the bear market right when it's like the market sentiment is so negative those like little things all add up and then makes a huge difference in the performance now in this case is an nft launch right so so what i do now i actually look at like all the other so first of all i look at all the there are a bunch of chains that are like more positive as far as market sentiment so that's that's important right so like first thing i want to look at is just like okay is the market sentiment more positive than other chains because then then that's where you want to go right you want to make it easier you don't want to make it harder then um i want to look at see okay what about other let's say if it's a car what where are the other cars at right if they're all just going on like tezos like there's no reason why 
why you should just like go pick it like and pick a new pick a new one um and then you know just just reinvent the wheel right they've they've done the research they've already collected that they you know um it's not even just like the community but also like they they've they've actually built up that chain to be um let's say attractive to these people who like to just buy let's say car parts of mclaurin right so then if you come in with porsche all of a sudden his chances are these guys may be interested in your nft too right they're already there they already bought nfts they're holders right they'd be like okay this was a success maybe i want to do another one right but they didn't even like actually you know for like nft porsche they didn't even like use that so so anyways it's the market sentiment it's looking at like other collections. Have they done anything in those? And then looking at the culture, I I believe this may be, this may be just my belief. Maybe no one else agrees, but um, I believe each chain has its own culture. Um, and, and, you know, Solana, what's that? I, I think you're muted. Did I just lose you? Uh, no, here, let me uh, reconnect my mic. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You back? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Was, uh, so the D gens on Solana, you have like yes. Christie's Fine Art on Ethereum, right? Yes. You have the the Flow, which is like more of your uh, sports collectibles, your NBA yes. Top Shot, and and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, I I hundred percent agree that each chain has its own community and has its own following and also ecosystem support, which actually for us is we actually work with those, with those chains and even help them on the marketing side. And um, yeah, I think who you pick as like your influencers, your brand ambassadors is very important and on like the vision that you want to build and make sure that you fit into that ecosystem. Cause the Solana community and the Solana hackathons are very, very tight. Right. And just, they're just, they're, they're degens, right? And that, that was big news when D-Gods actually decided to move off of um, uh, Solana. And so, um, you know, uh, we'll, so, we'll, we'll be following them. Yeah, so that's also very interesting, right? So they so they have two collections. So they have the D-Gods and they have Utes, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they I suppose they, t they took uh, D-Gods to Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, and then, which makes sense, if they're the top of Solana, Right. And then now they want to actually go on Ethereum. Like that makes sense because they already see this is this is like the crazy part though. Like some someone else may see that and they'd be like, oh, that makes sense. I'm also on Solana. I should go on Ethereum too. But they don't actually they miss the part that it's like, no, no, no. They were the top on Solana and now they're going on Ethereum, right? So that there's a reason. There's no reason for everyone to go on like Ethereum. But then uh the second collection, they went on Polygon. So it's to, to me it sounds I don't know this like I don't know Frank uh, the the founder like that the the founder that well to actually ask this but the maybe it it may just be like assumption but maybe they did this because so Reddit uh, Starbucks all these uh, big companies they're going on Polygon right now mm -hmm. there's a big movement on Polygon a lot of gamers like uh, as in like gaming companies and then. Obviously, Ethereum is just the OG, right? So they're like, okay, let's just go one from the OGs and then one from the like the new stuff, right? Which is Polygon, right? So we have both. So it's almost like don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? If they put everything on ETH, then they may have missed out on what Polygon could have been. It seems as though to me that's yeah. that was their that was their that was the concept of course it has some it has a lot to do with you know the on-chain utilities as well right so like doodles went on flow because of the customization they want to offer people and actually on flow they'll be able to do that a lot better versus like on ethereum yeah but then i don't know why like youths like has to be on polygon but there may be reason for that too yeah um you know what's really interesting is to the the follow the developer um, and Maria Shen, she's with Electric mm. Capital. Every year she publishes this report about these ecosystems and the chains and the movement in developer activity, which um, you're right. And it's just, you know, there are fundamental reasons why one would choose Polygon over Solana over this. And I actually heard that from a gaming ecosystem standpoint, a SWE 
is actually um, uh, favored by developers because, well, it's written in Rust, but it uses uh, the Move programming language. And I mm. heard that, uh, I talked to a, a gaming founder that I've known and he's been in, he, he was minting NFTs and right, like 2017, 2018. And he says that for every 10 lines of code, you have to join another chain. It's, it's one line of code uh, using Move. And he says, I would rather build on SWE than, than these other chains. So mm. if you know that there's like also developer reasons for these and uh, right, it really just goes back to this community and just each of the use cases yeah. are kind of unique. That's interesting because that has, that has um, to me, that has pros and cons, right? So when you go to these new chains, so I love these mm -hmm. new chains, right? All these new chains, I actually love them. I, I, I tell a lot of people lately, just go away from ETH um, unless there's a reason. Oh. And yeah, no, really. And, and so, but, but the problem is with some of these new chains or maybe not new because some of them are not new, but they maybe not as well um, built for NFTs you know, for and what, what I just for people to have a reference. So, like on Ethereum, we have about 150,000 collections, but let's say on Cardano, we have total of 5,000 projects. Not even just mm -hmm. NFT. Like, that's that's projects. We're not even counting just NFTs. So there's actually less NFTs than even 5,000. So, so there's not a lot of NFTs. So which means developers. So let's say what. So let's say you want to launch an NFT collection. You're gonna go out and look for developers, and then developers if unless they're working at a big company they're going to be like well do i want to work at a collect do i want to work at a chain where i get more work or less work um do i want to work at a chain where uh everything is going to be complicated or i have a lot of resources like i go on github i can find everything in a second or i need to develop everything from scratch myself yeah. Right? so that's that's the cons of those chains right then they have to actually develop and just be the be the first, you know? Yeah. You know, for me, um, I would like to see NFT web three crypto technology where people don't even think about the chain as so much as it's just this invisible technology in the background. Like right mm -hmm. now we're yeah. on a zoom call. I'm not yeah. sure of the TCP IP protocol, nor do I even understand the packets mm -hmm. that are being sent mm -hmm. from my Wi-Fi to your Wi-Fi, And it's just right. so beautifully um, done. And, you know, I use top shot. So Topshot, I'm looking at Crypto Slam right now, and Topshot had 22 million transactions on this. It, it, it's flow. But you know, my friends, when I'm hanging out with them on the weekends, they're invisible to the chain. And they're just like, hey, I just bought Kobe Bryant's or I brought LeBron James's moment. And I think that they've done extremely well. Yeah. yeah. They, I mean, it's USD on their website, right? It yeah. doesn't even say like anything exactly. else. Exactly. It, so. It's it's beautiful. And so, yeah, looking here at Crypto Slam data, you know, Axie Infinity did a good job pulling in users that kind of were invisible to what was going on in the back end. They just had so many new wallet signups and pulling in people that have, haven't even used crypto anymore. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a really good point. That's been a recent, that's been a, re, that's been a, it just left an impression on me recently. Someone said that on a Twitter space. And then, I mean, I, I knew it, but like, it just like made me think, because we're going in that direction where like, I think it's Ticketmaster or one of these, maybe mm -hmm. Eventbrite, one of these companies, they're actually using NFTs without people knowing. That's um, awesome. And, and, and so that's really cool, right? So this is where, this is where actually NFTs are used for where they need to be Correct. used versus, versus like- Speculative where, NFTs. Yeah, just where, we just like, to, yeah. where we just tell people, hey, this is the NFT, the NFT is so cool. And then like, and, and I mean, I have projects that we do this, right? It's like <laughs> as a as a marketer, I still have to I still have to market what is given to me, right? So I can't just like tell everyone to just, you know, just yeah, forget yeah. your dreams and everything, right? But 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 here's the thing, right? Now what is it? Like it's it's more like, hey, so here's this really, really cool NFT and all these like exclusive features of the NFT. And then once you buy that, you get to play our game. Right. Um, it's like exactly well. Exactly. Well, so, okay, but what about like you play the game and it's really cool, and then inside the game there are all these NFTs that you've been interacting with exactly. you didn't even know until you read about it on some article. Exactly, and I guess for it's any gamers, game um, so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I do need to wrap up. Maybe just closing thoughts for you, Arvin. But for me, it's it's um, you know, for gamers, would you rather buy a skin that 
you can only use it in this game, or would you rather buy a skin that you can bring it all across the metaverse, across different games? And um, I think that, you know, essentially NFTs, digital collectibles, I, I would love to see the use case go beyond just the speculative um, NFTs into, right? Uh, I'm looking in California, the DMV now is, is going to start looking into blockchain technology for the transfer of title ownership which is just going to speed up time, get rid of all of that paperwork, have clear transparency on who owns a car or who owns a home. And so excited for the next episode that we're going to be doing together and just sharing yeah, of more course. insights. But yeah, Arvin, do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, just going off that, I, I say real estate, right? So I was buying property recently and then I told my realtor, I said, so I'm ready, right? So let's just get things going. I need this to be done in a week. And he's like, that's impossible. Like we can't do this in a week. I'm like, well, why can't we do this in a week? I have the money. There's the house. It's vacant. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just crazy. get done. Right? Exactly. But, exactly. But there's, there's no smart contract. All sorts of intermediates have to do things and it takes time. Yeah. Right. So blockchain could have just completely solved that problem. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess maybe wrapping it up, uh, it's, it's the, it's really cool. We talked about all sorts of, um, all sorts of things that Web two companies shouldn't be doing when they're coming into the when they're coming to the Web three. Uh, we touched on some of the things that um, all is relevant to all collections, like you know the the choice of blockchain, the choice of simplicity. Uh, this is actually just like doing their due diligence to see how they present their offers, so it's actually um, really relevant to the community, but also just to their fans as well. Um, and then yeah, can't wait to do another one with you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good mm -hmm. stuff, Arvin. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.